The Nigerian government announced that students can apply for loans to finance their education starting May 24th, 2024. This follows the launch of an online application portal by the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, NELF Fund. This initiative fulfills President Bola Tinumbu's campaign promise to make university education more accessible. He signed the Access to Higher Education Act in June 2023, allowing students to obtain interest-free loans from NEL Fund for any accredited Nigerian institution. The program initially aimed for a September 2023 launch, but encountered delays. In January 2024, the president, in January 2024, President Tinumbu expanded the program to include loans for vocational skills training, recognizing the importance of both academic and technical qualifications. Joining us is the National President of Academic Staff Union of Universities, uh, uh, sorry, the Coordinator Congress of University Academics, Konwa, Dr. Ni Sumonu. Uh, Dr. Sumonu, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much for having me on this program this evening. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how would you want to, what would be your initial response to uh, the intro I've just read? Yeah, thank you very much once again. And I want to say good evening to Nigerians. First, um, the office is the national president of the Congress of University Academics. Uh, that's the office I occupy. Th thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the correction. The NEL Fund, the National Education Law Initiative by the government of... Uh, President Bola Ahmed Chinobu's administration um, is in line with uh, what is obtainable uh, on the international scene. That is uh, making education accessible to all and sundry, tertiary education, without being denied because of fund. So this is a good initiative it's a welcome development um the only thing the congress of university academics would like to put on the table uh, for consideration by the current government is the lessons that one thinks will have been learned from the previous attempts at providing loans to for tertiary education in Nigeria, those lessons should be brought on board so that this would not be another failed attempt. And on record, we have that the regime of uh, General Yakubu Gowon in the 1970s uh, made attempts to provide loan for education. At a point, it suffered some setbacks. Due to, I will mention that in a moment, in 1993-94, thereabout, the government of uh, General Ibrahim Bada Mosiba Bangida also tried to make loan available for tertiary or for education generally. That's also suffered some setback. And those two attempts, those two previous attempts suffered setbacks because of endemic corruption. And possibly partly because of unavailability of data of the beneficiaries, uh, which is closely linked to the issue of uh, corruption. So one expects the government of the day leveraging on advances in technology, leveraging on data that has, that has accrued over time, data being obtained from Nigerians, NIN, uh, what's it called, uh, BVN, and so on and so forth, to be able to track beneficiaries and bring on board the failure of the past so that this, I mean, 
What happened in the past will not uh, repeat itself. It's, an attempt, it's a good attempt by the government to inject more fund into tertiary institution, into tertiary education. And for us in Conwa, it's a good development. But like you rightly stated, and you know, from the historical perspective, uh, it's not that it's not been tried before. Uh, we may have the advantage of technology, as you rightly stated. We may have the seeming advantage of um, uh, documentational advantage, given the fact that at least there are databases now to consult to check who is a bona fide Nigerian and uh, the tertiary institutions too, indeed vocational institutions uh, can have their records easily, easily um, verified now because of the advantage of technology. But there is an innate, innate fact that you've, you've spoken to which is still very endemic in our, in our climb, and it is so endemic that even all the known advantages of technology to humanity is practically being messed up and defied in Nigeria. Uh, you have situations across the world where technology is aptly and proficiently utilized to, to uh, decapitate criminality, terrorism. But in Nigeria, we can see that with budgets as lousy as the ones that security has gotten in Nigeria in the last 10 years plus, uh, terrorism, criminality are festering. Security is becoming daily an issue. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, intellectuals like you should be letting the government know that it is one thing to have a good idea, but in so much as this fund is now going to be functioning as a government parastatal, and like 99.9% .9 of government parastatals in Nigeria, these two will go moribund. What would be your response to, to that uh, remark? So if I get your point very well, that you are speaking to the issue of endemic corruption, if I get that well. Which is a fact. Yeah. So if I'm, as far as we are concerned, as far as I'm concerned, honestly speaking, it is the willpower that the government lacks with respect to fighting corruption. Possibly because some of their friends, some of their cronies are involved. Corruption cannot be fought on selective basis. Corruption will be fought on a holistic basis. That if you want to result, you must fight it on a holistic basis. And like one of the leaders in the country said sometimes ago, that if you fail to fight corruption, corruption will kill any organization, any nation, if you allow it to fester the way it is festering in this country. No initiative will thrive, no matter how good the initiative um, is. No initiative will thrive with respect to corruption. As this education loan functioned in some countries, worked fine in some countries, the answer is yes. And if we check those co countries, it's near absence of corruption. I'm not saying total eradication of corruption, but if you do the crime, you must be ready to do the time. So if government, over the time, over the years, I've made an example. I've made example of people who have corruptly enriched themselves. No matter how highly placed they are, others will pick lessons. You see, punishment is not to destroy the person who commits any offense. Punishment is for information. In addition to the formation of the person who commits the offense, punishment is also good for others onlookers, other citizens to take lessons that the if I parents. attempt to do what this man has done, I'm going to go the way he has gone. I guess deterrence. But if you allow 
for deterrence, I guess you want to you, you, yes, you give yes, me Yes, yes, for deterrence, yes. Oh, oh, so oh, it also oh. serves as deterrence for other citizens so that they won't want to go the same route. Ah. But what we have in the country is with, I mean, is a situation where somebody does the crime, he knows A, B, C, and uh, you beg, you consult, and stuff like that, and you are giving a slap on the wrist. So coming back to the issue of Nell Fund, the education um, loan, I think the lessons of the past, specifically with respect to corruption, which is directly linked to the data, the government should deploy all available technology at detecting fake students, fake applicants, applicants that are not in the uh, um, tertiary institution that the NEL fund covers. When you do all that and you do it honestly, sincerely, it's, this is an attempt that will, this is, this is an initiative that should bode well for the country, for our tertiary institution, and largely, in generally, the country. Dr. Sumonu, uh, does Konwa, uh, does Konya su make suggestions to government uh, on matters pertaining to education? Yes, we do from time to time. With respect, specifically with respect to NEL Fund, we submitted on two occasions, one in 2023, another one on, specifically on 17th March 2024, of our perspective on how the Act should read, what should contain in the Act, the advantages, and the areas we would like the government to look into so as to avoid some pitfalls that befell the previous two attempt. So from time to time, on various educational policies, we reach out to the government, we send letters to the government, we send position papers to the government. And you are quite happy with how this is unfolding? Just asking. It's like I said at the onset, it's a good policy because it's a, one of the international best practice in the implementation, the Nigerian factor, we should not allow it to set in. We should do it the way it should be done because it's one of the ways of adding, injecting additional fund into the tertiary education uh, however, system that we complain about from time to time. Dr. Sumonu, however, uh, the author, university teachers or lecturers association is of the belief that uh, uh, the fund should not be a loan, uh, that the instrumentality of a grant should be used. Uh, do you and your colleagues in Konwa, in any way, shape, or form, uh, believe that this should be a grant rather than uh, the low interest or no interest loan uh, for which it's been defined statutorily? Our perspective differ a little bit. For us, uh, there was going to be, for this loan, there is going to be a sense of belonging to all beneficiaries that I am committed to my country. With respect to grants, our position uh, remains that the government should consider a word of scholarship, grants, bursaries, and other targeted subsidies at various levels to who? To very indigent but exceptionally gifted students. Fingers are not equal. You have exceptionally gifted, but they could be indigent. This category, in our own perspective, of students, of candidates, of applicants, should be granted 
scholarships, should be granted bursaries. So these are our position. And uh, let me say that there's beauty in looking at things from different perspectives. Uh, it's only that time that you can actually make progress. When we all sleep and face one direction, there's likely not to be any meaningful development. There's not likely not to, going to be any meaningful development. So um, a form of a marketplace uh, for student financing is uh, about being birthed by this statute and uh, the establishment that is predicated on the statute. However, the ultimate essence anywhere in the world where universities thrive, the ultimate essence of students financing or funding is to have those funds ultimately be piped into those institutions where the students will go so that services of professionals like yourself and the requisite uh, learning ecosystem will be well funded because education is not cheap. I want to believe that we, we agree on, the, on that. Quality education is not cheap. So do you as the president or the leader of a major university teachers uh, association, do you see this program ultimately going any further to lubricate the financing imperatives of tertiary institutions, especially universities, where uh, CONUA functions? I think I've alluded to that in my previous intervention, that this is one of the ways of injecting more fund into the tertiary institution that we all complain about. Uh, the act, the, the little I've checked in the act, how it is done in other parts of the world is to inject the fund, A, B, C, D, as applied for the loan, and they have been successful fund success, successful to be recipient of the loan. Instead of paying A, B, C, D directly, you pay their institutions to provide things needed for their education. When you do that, and it is honestly deployed, devoid of corruption, this will inject more resources for learning will improve the environment for learning. Dr. Ni so Sumanu, to date in my intervention. Dr. Ni Sumanu, we really want to appreciate you. We would have loved to engage with you, uh, to engage further with you, but unfortunately, time that dictator on a show like this is uh, is denying us that opportunity. We look forward to having you some other time. Thank you, sir, for. For your Thank you very much, sir. I want to appreciate you for opinion. getting our perspective Thank on you. this very important uh, scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. This is where we wrap it up for today. We want to thank you for being part of the program this evening. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening. <laughs>